Hello everyone, this is Shiva Joy. Welcome to my channel Zion Shekinah Official. Zion means God's dwelling place and Shekinah is God's glory. Um, today I want to talk about cleanness. Um, and I'm going to read some verses from Psalm um, 18. Uh, 18, uh, chapter 18, 28 to 50. Um, see, what does it mean by being clean? Being clean is being, um, you know, physically we take bath and, and we become clean. Uh, we wash and we become clean. We um, uh, cleanse ourselves with, uh, you know, all kinds of things like water and uh, soap and, and uh, all kinds of things. And then, then we become clean. Mentally, um, some people want to be clean mentally and so they become clean by um you know uh, uh, renewing their thoughts renewing their thinking renewing their mind renewing what they think is good i, I mean what it says is good you know philosoph philosophically they they uh, think of many philosophical ideas or quotes and try to like imbibe on that try to uh, meditate on that and then they think it is and then they try to become clean in that way. Others, uh, religiously, if you say they want to be clean, they, you know, do their duties according to the different places that they go. We go to church. Uh, we try to do lots of um, volunteering there and offerings and then <clears throat> put our prayers there before God. And then um, and also... Um, participate in church activities, listen to the sermons and and uh, things like that. So religiously, you know, we try to also become clean in that way. Um, morally, uh, cleanness is something like, uh, you know, uh, you don't get into wrong re relationships. Um, you don't uh, have relationships out of marriage. You don't have um, uh, illegal you know, uh, things going on with others to hurt or harm others. And then you also, uh, morally, you live your life, like in a, in a sense that you don't do anything wrong. You don't do, um, you, you don't um, do any criminal things, you know. You don't murder, you don't slander, you don't, um, you don't tell lies, you don't, like there are some standards to be moral and so you become moral like that. But here, God, uh, Jesus, is asking us to... Give me one second. So, yeah, so Jesus is asking us to be moral over here. And uh, and, and and the reason uh, I have taken this uh, part of talking about being, like, moral is, in a sense, I'm actually going from one room to another room because this... Uh, fan in my phone, uh, in my um, room, it suddenly stopped. I don't know why. Work of the devil. You know, you can say that because every time we do something for the Lord, devil hinders. So bear with me one second. Yeah. Okay, here I am in this room. So, um, Oh God, it's not enough light here. So yeah, so so there are many things that. <coughs> so yeah, so we try to be like uh, uh, observe cleanliness or uh, be clean and all that. And actually, in school, I was just reminded that we had a day of cleanliness, where like uh, every month. Every month, once a day, uh, once a month, we had uh, teachers checking our nails if they're dirty in school. You know, when we're, we're in third and fourth grade, second grade, and all that. So teachers checking our nails, and and, and if uh, if kids, you know, all kinds of kids from different kinds of backgrounds used to come, so they used to check for lice in their hair, and if their dress, if the uniform is clean, and if their socks are not smelling, or all sorts of things. You know, one once a month. They, we used to observe a cleanliness day in school and the teachers used to check for that. So here, but what uh, uh, 
Paul, uh, sorry, what King David is talking about is in Psalm, as I was reading that a couple of days ago, it struck my, you know, mind and I thought, what is this cleanliness? What is this cleanness that the Lord wants us to be clean? So here he says that in, uh, I'm going to read this uh, chapter, Psalm chapter 18, Psalm 18 uh, verses 20 to 50. And it says, The Lord has dealt me according to my righteousness, according to the clean, cleanness of my hands. He has rewarded me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and I am not guilty of turning from my God. And... Uh, all his laws are before me. I have not turned away from his decrees. I have been blameless before him and I have kept myself from sin. The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. So here, the, you know, we, sometimes we say that the Lord is righteous. And, and, and not sometimes, we know that the Lord is righteous. And we also know that, like, uh, he rewards people according to their righteousness this struck my mind and i was thinking what what is righteousness because in one verse of the bible it says that we our righteousness is like filthy rags so no one can stand before god no one can say that he or she is righteous and it is considered that our righteousness is uh, like a, a filthy rag so uh, uh, so what does what does uh, it mean that he rewards us according to our righteousness in Psalm Psalm 18 verses is it 18 yeah Psalm 18 verses uh, 20 uh, it says the Lord has dealt me according to my righteousness according to the cleanness of my hands he has rewarded me but again you know I want to repeat this that God says that 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 he says that our righteousness is like filthy rags. But here in Psalm 20, sorry, Psalm 18 verses 20, it says, he has rewarded us according to our righteousness. What does this mean? What it means is that, that our, our righteousness is nothing but compared to the cleanness of our hands. Now, what is cleanness of our hands? The cleanness of our hands that is described in the Bible is uh, in Psalm 18:21, he says, For I have kept the ways of the Lord, I am not guilty of turning from my God. So that is one. One is, if we have kept the ways of the Lord and we are not guilty, then uh, then we are the uh, then we hold some righteousness because there's cleanness cleanness in our hands there's cleanliness in our soul and he also says and the second and the second point is that i have that i have been blameless before him and i've kept myself from sin now all have sinned and come short of the glory of god it says in the bible but here the psalmist says that i have been blameless before him and i've kept myself from him what does that mean that Sin comes, temptation comes, uh, sin uh, is rampant in, 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 in our society. But when we know that it is sin and when we know that we don't, should not do that and we keep away from ourselves, then the second uh, criteria that we have cleanness is uh, that it is when we are blameless before God and the third thing is the Lord is uh, and then again see in Psalm 18 24 it says the Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness according to the cleanness of my hand of my uh, the, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight in his sight is important not in our sight not if we go and do 101 things morally physically mentally emotionally all those things that i've just described before all those things that we do and we think that we are clean that is not going to work that is only for our viewing of the things that that we are clean that is only our perspective of being clean but in his sight if he if he thinks that we are clean if he know if he thinks and holds us righteous and uh, of the clean uh, if he thinks that we are in the right standing before him and according to the cleanness of our hands in his sight then he considers us to be clean and the and uh, and and what happens when we are clean like that he also shows uh, and shows some promises towards us like for example 
you know we have to be clean before god like i said you know mentally me- emotionally physically uh, all those things we try all those things we want to do it all those things that i examples that i gave you we try and we do it we do it also but at the same time before god if we are if we keep ourselves clean which means we have not sin we have not um, murdered anyone we have not taken other people's lives willfully for their properties or or for your or for selfish gains or if you have not done those things if you have not done those things then god is going to make you as a righteous god is going to look at you as a righteous person god is going to look at you because of the cleanness of your hands it says because see everything that we do in this world we do it with our hands right right if we have to we speak we do with things with our brain we speak and then we do lot a uh, lot of thinking with our hands but ultimately we do everything with our hands we go and bribe other people with our hands we go and say things with other people in our hands we actually put our hands into work because hands are the mechanical uh, tools that bring about some kind of uh, distortion good or, or some kind of distortion and some kind of good and some kind of bad so here is according to the cleanness of our hands and all also if you see in genesis when um uh so if you see in genesis cain murders abel and when god says what have you done what have you done and he puts up his hand and when he puts up his hand god says there's blood in your hands right so god sees that he is a god who's all knowing he is a god who sees also right so he sees that there is blood in Cain's hands and he says you have murdered your brother and you will be cast out for generations and then you will be marked as a wanderer and as a person who will never have peace on the earth so he curses Cain so uh, cleanness of our hands also you know uh, uh, shows what we do you know and sometimes uh, they say they don't say oh he's very corrupt in his soul he's very corrupt in his uh, or she's very co- corrupt in her thinking they won't say that they'll just say oh did you see the, the the i don't remember the saying but they say did you see their hands did you see her hands did you see his hands what they have done so you know that kind of hands are very important because um uh, it shows who we are and what we have done with our life so god also says that according to the cleanness of it, of your hands i'm going to uh, say that you're righteous or you're not righteous so when we do all those things here in the psalm 18 and chapter 21 he gives back see every time every time we obey god every time we do the right things before god every time that we do the things that god wants us to do he also gives back it's like a parent child relationship child does something good we reward child doesn't do uh, uh, some something that is not good or does something good uh, what what do we do we punish the child because we want them to walk in the right way right that's why parents are here to correct them so uh, and some parents themselves do wicked things so they don't know how to correct the children and that's how their children also go and do wrong things willfully or whether or not because the curse you know for seven generations falls on such children uh, whose parents are wicked whose blood is on their hands who has done like lot of deceiving and conniving and lot of things like that god is not going to leave that generation folks it is not it is not what you, what kind of witchcraft you do it is not what kind of a uh, hundred things that you go to prophets and act as if you have not done anything and show and try to take blessings no god is god when it comes to him there's no one he says he is no respecter of persons he when he sees what is right he rewards when he sees what is wrong he is going to punish otherwise how can we call him god he is a god who sits on the throne he is a god of justice so he will bring his vengeance vengeance is mine he said i will repay he said so when he says what he has said he is going to do that so here when we have done like uh, good things or we were not gone, done good things he says to the ones who have done good things he says in ch- chapter 18 uh verse 25 he says to the faithful you show yourself faithful to the blameless you show yourself blameless to the pure you show yourself pure but to the devious you show yourself shrewd so that is one promise see this is one promise that we have from god like when we are faithful to him he'll be faithful
when we are blameless he also shows himself blameless like you know we can say what does it mean god is always blameless but what does it mean that he shows blameless see we cannot say oh i have been so good but god punish me oh i have been so doing all these things you know that are right in the sight uh, that are right in the sight of people but god punish you cannot say that because god scales and standards are different and god is blameless why because when you do something wrong he's going to also punish in the same way so that he doesn't get the blame so when can you blame a person when there's something wrong right most of the time it's like that with good people bad people always blame good people that's an another subject but the thing is here you cannot say oh god has done some injustice or god i oh you can blame god no he you cannot blame god why because he will do what is needed and the second uh, promise he says is you save the humble but bring low the, uh, it's in um, same chap- chapters 18 verse 25 27 it says you save the humble you bring low those whose eyes are haughty you lord keep my lamp burning my god turns my darkness into light with your help i can advance against a troop with my god i can scale a wall how beautiful is that you know with just being right in the sight of god god can do many things for us god can do many many things he says that you save the humble who are those humble humble people are the ones who have the cleanness of hands hands who have the purity of the soul who have the right thinking according to god's standards who do not you know wage war or go into battle or do other things wrong wrongly who do not take bribes to uh, kill a person or who do not take bribes to harm the other person or who do not murder their blood their relatives blood is not on their hands for property so all these things the uh, a humble person will have why because these hum- humble people you know they fear god they know that god will be watching them 24/7 why because god created them and he is the god right so we have seen that time and again that he watches everyone in the earth he that's why in um in the bible i'll give you the verse it says that his ways were wandering you know on the earth to see if there was even one righteous person so that he could not punish he says so in the times of sodom and gomorrah he he challenges lot and he says if there are like 20 people 10 people five people tell me i will not burn the city he says because he knows he's a god who's been watching the wickedness of that city you know how they were given into marriages a wicked man gives his daughter to marriage to another wicked man of who has a son they get married so that their allies can be strong so that they can do more wickedness but no god is going to rain down sulfur and fire on such people and just like in sodom and gomorrah he is going to burn them alive so when god you see before god you know if people don't fear people good people you know that's up to you but just know that behind them is god standing with them so be careful be careful of such people uh, uh, and and don't harm them don't even try to think about doing anything because in like in sodom and gomorrah that's how the whole city to this day it's in ruins so it's like that and also it says that uh, you lord uh, okay we've read this and and why why because why does god, why is god faithful and why uh, god saves the humble because his nature is if you see in psalm 1830 it says as for god his way is perfect the lord's word is flawless see the god is perfect in all ways and his word is flawless which means it's his word is without any blemish his word is one thing flying pages are flying all over yeah his word is flawless his um the word is flawless that means there is not that, like can you pick any wrong thing in the bible you can't right can you say oh this verse is wrong or oh, this verse is not right or oh, this verse is not written well can you say that you can say that you might not understand it you might not understand it because your your knowledge is less you have not been let see when can you understand bible that's also one thing if you just read it as a story book if you just read it as a um, novel you're not going to understand the bible you have to read the, with the help of the holy spirit why because the bible has been inspired by the holy spirit and that's how 
it was written so anything anything of mind anything of carnal nature if you do it uh, uh, with the bible you'd not be able to understand it but with the help of the holy spirit everything is like in you know, white and black black and white so yeah so here it says and and god's word is flawless he shields all who take refuge in him and for who is god besides the lord and who is the rock except our god it, it is god who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure he makes my feet like the feet of a deer because he causes me to stand on the heights he trains my hands for battle my arms can bend a bow of bronze you make your that means you know he gives strength he gives strength to the people in the time to his people in the time of battle and they can easily bend the bows that is like it's a supernatural thing like you know here i can think of david fighting goliath um david did not have to you know wear all the armor and shield and everything that is required for the battle but he um he uh one second yeah but he uh goes into battle with just a sling and five stones and what happens goliath gets beaten on his forehead with one stone and falls dead to the ground so that is the strength of god he is just shown there but who who has done that job god does that so that's that and then he says uh psalm 18 34 he trains my hands for battle my arms can bend a bow of bronze you make your saving help my shield and and your right hand sustains me your help has made me great say without god's help we cannot be great at all and our enemies no better than uh, than us you know because sometime back i want to say this um uh, one of uh, i just happened to like tumble over uh, a person and he and he seem to and he's a prophet so um and then you know it was just and then he picked my name um and i didn't even like go to him or anything like that he just picked my name and he started prophesying everything and i was so shocked that some of my friends that i thought were my friends were actually my enemies and he started even taking their names that even shocked me because this prophet i didn't even know uh, any time before in my life and uh, he started saying but i was like how can that be but he is my friend she is my friend i never I, i i don't think that they are you know i think something is getting mixed up and all that stuff but then you know in my spirit the holy spirit spoke to me and he said like how dare you doubt my um my way of telling who your enemies are and then i was very humbled i was very um uh careful about that not to doubt the holy spirit or and and, and i was also uh, ashamed you know of how uh, i thought first i because i looked at that man and i thought maybe he is not saying the right things but when he took and even though even though he took the names you know so sometimes the devil also deceives us like that the devil deceives us into thinking that uh who we see as friends are friends but actually they are the worst wicked um rogues they are the worst wicked enemies we have on the face of the earth so i was doubting this man and then finally um you know he asked me um uh, and all this was going on in my head and finally when he asked me i'm a very uh, verbal person and i'm also a very visual person um it was on on a zoom so i was like seeing him and and uh, he was seeing me and so uh, i asked him um you know the the people that you told me you know some men and women who i thought are my friends um i never thought that they would be like this big rogues and and who have done harm and and behind my back they have done all this cheating and are still doing it and they have not left me uh they are still conniving plots and all that stuff so uh when i asked him that uh, and i said how and and he said um you know why are you looking at me um why are you not believing the holy spirit and he and he said i want you to take away the spirit of like deceiving spirit out from you because you're not seeing what god wants you to see and uh, he said that see how would i know that this person you know is your friend but i took his name right and you were shocked 
how would i know that this person is a uh, that woman is a uh, is your friend but i took her name and she have his your friend so um and i was yeah so i was very shocked because i'm i'm also a person like you know as i said i'm a very like i'm a visual person uh when they preach and teach and all that the servants of god uh people of god i just don't listen to them if i listen to them i can take everything in i have to look at them uh i have to see their gestures i have to see their expressions i have to see their movements and everything and then i i get the feel of everything like i i take take in the sermon and 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 no uh but just listening to that um i'm i'm not that so that's why i don't like podcasts where it's like only audio um and that doesn't suit me i'm i i i can listen to podcasts and say oh i can listen to videos and i mean i can listen to sermons so podcasts are not my my thing um but at the same time at the same time you can say how come then you like music because music is also you know 90% of it is audio these days they're making music videos but how is it that you can listen but music is something that you are you are tuned to listen right uh, you listen you listen uh, i mean i listen and then i uh, perceive it i um take in and all those things so i enjoy it so it's something like music is something that's made that way but a sermon i i have to look at the person i'm kind of a visual person so yeah so here coming back to that so when when he said that i was really shocked and ever since i've not like gone back uh, you know I, i'm very careful of not even like talking to them because i i'm also kind of hurt because you know i sincerely thought they they're my friends and this is what they're doing behind my back is very hurting is is very hurting is uh, is not good it's not good for them you know people who try to do harm to others fall into their own pit people who try to hurt others um, 100% they will have their own fall back and god will reward those things back to them so especially when he says like touch not my anointed don't do that don't do it so it's very hurting when someone you know your friends um try to harm you like that but anyway like let's look to god's word and here um he also says that and he also gives us if you read the whole chapter i'm not going to read it but if you read the whole chapter in 18 and uh, uh till fif- uh, 18 from 20 to 50 you'll see in 31 it says i pursued my en- enemies and overtook them i did not turn back till they were destroyed i crushed them so that they could not rise they fell beneath my feet you armed me with strength for battle you humbled my adversaries before me you made my enemies turn their backs in flight and i destroyed my foes they cried for help but there was no one to save them to the lord but he did not answer i beat them as fine as wind blown dust i trampled them like mud in the street you have delivered me from the attacks of the people you have made me the head of nations before i did not know now be, before i'm ah, sorry people i did not know now serve me foreigners cow before me as soon as they hear of me they obey me they all lose heart they come trembling from their strongholds the lord lives praise be to my rock exalted be god my savior he is the god who avenges me who subdues nations under me who saves me from my enemies you exalted me above my foes from a violent man you rescued me therefore i will praise you lord among the nations i will sing the praises of your name he gives his king great victories he shows unfailing love to his anointed to david and to all his descendants for ever see i said i'm not going to read but i felt like reading so you know just two things cleanness of our hands bring so much of blessing from god so much so many blessings you know he protects he saves he um, equips us into going into you know and getting victories going into battle then getting victories and our enemies will be thinking what is wrong with them how can they how can how can they win so many times but these foolish rogues little do they know that and they have to understand and know if they are really uh, ha- if they do have some brains in their heads at least that god is helping them and they should not compete with uh, sheba or anyone or but they should come comp- they are competing with god why because it's not sheba strength it's not and or your strength my strength or anyone's strength but if god is behind us it is his strength so uh this is what i wanted to talk about today and you know cleanness of our hands and righteousness before god is nothing but being clean 
you know with our hands being uh, right in the standing of god god does god knows that we can't be holy like him because we are not god but we try but we have to uh, know that we need to keep ourselves holy and blameless before god we know that he kn- but we have to know that we have to um, keep ourselves righteous why because see it's not just um, see jesus came on the earth as fully man and fully god and so he was able to be holy some people argue that but even if you see the other great men and women of god who uh, when uh salvation came to them when they uh, they started walking with god they kept themselves pure they kept themselves uh holy they kept themselves clean righteous and all that before god why because they know the price of being unrighteous and righteous and they know the price of being uh not right with themselves before god and then how being right before god can bring so many blessings and and uh, and how god can use you know them and uh, how god has used them so it's very important that that the word of god tells us to do it and we need to do it as christians why because it is it is important that as a uh, as a believer as a one who walks with as a one who knows god should know how to do what god wants us to do so it's very important it's a uh, and uh, these days you know i'm seeing so much of judgment on the wicked people i'm seeing so much of uh, um immediate repercussions to the sinful and i'm seeing like not just me like the others when they say sometimes i feel that i'm like over exaggerating my feelings or even thinking that it's really happening to them but then um when i see other people tell me you know she but this happened because they did that and i know that they were right and something wrong happened to them so you know god avenges folks because god this age this season is not a season where god is keeping quiet when his people are suffering God has given enough time for the wicked to uh to um repent but they're not doing it so just like Sodom and Gomorrah they'll be wiped out just like in Noah's time they'll be wiped out just like in um other things you know other people's lives we have seen you know how god really dealt and all that so like immediate repercussions immediate things and all that but see the thing is importantly if we have to live well we must know that we must live in obedience to god and uh, and it's not uh, don't take it easy and don't take it light because um god god is a god who's all knowing we can cheat we can cheat people maybe but we can cheat god and uh, and also see the good part here is just being clean with ourselves the cleanness of our hands can bring so many blessings from god so many added uh, fruits from god so many victories from god so um you know even in in your mind i i, I would think why would you want to lose all those things when it comes to you know doing just the right things what god wants you to but you know again the devil is acting very strong in some people the devil has uh, taken over their souls and their spirits so they act the way they have acted but again that's an, a different subject on how to like uh, uh, deliver yourself from such kind of evil things um but uh, but yeah just understanding god who is that he's a holy god is a righteous god is a judging god he's also a god of love grace and uh, truthfulness and honesty and is a god who is all knowing and that we must know that so um just wanted to you know talk about that today may the lord bless this word and thank you all so much for listening